It is my honor to uh, start the last lecture today, but before I do so, I would like to kick off with a brief question. How do you start your day every day? Uh, yes, coffee. This is one possibility. No, I was thinking of something else. Wonderful. Thank you very much for the buzzword. Yes, showering. These are our products. This is where we are at home, as you can see in this uh, picture. Of course, not everyone can afford such a beautiful bathroom as shown here, but I have uh, actually uh, dug up a study. Over 60% of the German population has a, a shower, one shower per day. And so far, our products are uh, constantly being used. And the average uh, showering time stands at 11 minutes. Well, you can decide now, are you on average or do you shower for longer or shorter? And the other thing is the majority of people actually shower with warm water. So the cold shower briefly at the end, maybe, uh, to actually uh, be awake. Uh, so much uh, for the topic of showering. Uh, just briefly, um, uh, let us introduce ourselves. My name is Timo Zimmermann. I've been over. Uh, I've been with Hans Grohe for over 25 years now. I have started my training there across all of the IT departments, and for over 15 years, I've been looking after PIM and the website. My name is Simon Wacker, and I've been uh, with Hans Grohe for roughly um, 20 years now. And uh, over 10 years, I uh, worked in infrastructure, looked uh, after some IT projects, and for roughly one and a half years, so I'm pretty fresh in this area, I have supported Timo Zimmermann now in the product experience. Exactly. What uh, kept us on our toes so far? Since 2004, we've been using a PIM system. We started uh, early on to use uh, a system based on Lotus Notes. Then in 2010, it uh, actually replaced it by the Hybris Commerce Cloud and use this completely now, not only for the website, but also for the PCM and uh, in this environment also for print. Um, so we use it across the board. It all started with Quarks Express. Uh, some of you will not even remember it. It used to be the uh, more important tool versus Adobe. Then through the print cockpit of commerce, we use the plugins of Werk 2. And in 2017, we reached the point where the commerce cloud uh, uh, actually cancelled the print cockpit and then we changed over uh, completely to the uh, publishing hub, the print suite. And for several years, we've also used the PDF renderer. So this is basically the historical development. The last project from 2017 with uh, Kolb Digital, and back then uh, we uh, received the uh, uh, award for the PDF renderer yesterday and I'm really proud of that. Uh, some uh, facts and figures for Hans Grohe, uh, over 1 billion turnover, roughly 200 million profits. And this is last year's figures. We're uh, well above the 5,000 employees worldwide now. We are part of a U.S. Uh, holding Moscow Corporation, but one part continues to be owned by the family, and we're very proud of this, that uh, we are not actually driven by an investor uh, but that we can actually build on a good community. We have two strong brands. AXO as the luxury segment with uh, many designers that uh, create complete bathroom uh, atmospheres and Hans Grohe, the professional brand for plumbers and uh, uh, to ensure that we always have the right top end quality. What do we do in this environment uh, with print? Our marketing is very active. Uh, we have very appealing uh, visuals. The touch is important to us. Uh, our products need to be felt too. You can 
uh, cannot feel them digitally. And this is why we reached the point um, saying, well, how do we handle these documents? Everyone takes the PDF documents and uploads them to the website, but this is not really digitalization. But uh, where we really use print is for drawing up quotes for our customers' quotations. We have great projects with architects and planners around the globe and there, there are many appealing visuals, uh, fantastic projects and when you look at this imagery, this the, you, you get envious, you really want to take a shower right away and then <laughs> you get what what this is what you get the uh, this is the standard sap generated quotation completely sober just text and uh, numbers even the texts are abbreviated because we can only fit in two by 20 characters to fit them into the layouts two or three years ago we said this document no longer fits us or our products we have to do something about it and uh, then we actually came across the print suite topic with the PDF renderer. And before we look at the content, let me briefly show you the architecture of how we handle all this. And on the left hand side, you can see that we're using SAP SE4C. Our consultants uh, generate their specifications there can design rooms there, can structure the complete product lists there, and then the process starts. How do I turn this into a quotation now? Then we uh, designed an add-on for C for C. This is a web form where the consultant can choose personalization features, some elements and can actually fall back on the existing Selim system where we've stored wonderful project images, can actually look at the inventory of images, but um, the consultant can also upload his own visuals that are anchored in the system, thereby creating a completely individual experience for our customers. Then this information is uh, actually returned to C4C and C4C then triggers the PDF renderer. And this means there is an XML interface where all the content is transferred. The control file of the, uh, the PDF renderer then gets the data for the products from the SAP system. So all of the technical details, the technical features, but also the product image dimensional uh, drawings, uh, flow charts. Uh, this all comes from the uh, uh, SAP system. Then I need the photos, the images uh, that we get from Selim. And then uh, the PDF renderer um, uh, actually mixes up the whole document in the black box and actually delivers it back to the C4C. So this is the complete journey in the background so that uh, we have a wide variety of systems integrated in this architectural process. This project was uh, initiated three years ago and Mr. Vaka joined us uh, about a year ago and took over a project in order to enhance the existing system even further. And he should actually present this himself. Thank you very much, Timo. Well, at the end of the day, the issue was uh, the uh, personalization through the web form. It was so successful in the small circle where we offered it so far that now the colleagues, colleagues have realized, the colleagues who are responsible for the international key accounts and key projects, they said, now we want to roll it out to the whole world because Sanskore actually delivers uh, to 145 countries 
and in future these countries should also receive those quotations containing all of these specifications. So we initiated a new project as an add-on to what we already had based on the architecture as described by Timo. We were briefed as follows. We were to reduce the manual effort. People want to do less manual work because currently when people actually uh, draw up quotations not using the wizard yet they do everything in word excel do their own powerpoints then actually convert them into a pdf file send it out um, and this should be standardized thereby reducing the workload the second brief was corporate design. We want to appear consistently, not only in Germany, in the US or in China, but everywhere in the world. So this is why we wanted to increase the number of countries. So we have to deliver well so that the colleagues can use this material. Because if we, in terms of individualization or personalization, and, uh, and create a thing that is not intuitively usable, then they will actually return to the PowerPoint, the Word, and the Excel files, the spreadsheets. We want the colleagues to work consistently across the board. What uh, was our lesson learned? Well, we want to use personalized text on the landing page. We will see it uh, later. Uh, we uh, have a landing page. Uh, we wanted to personalize this landing page. And uh, this means uh, to include a personal salutation while describing the project for which the quotation is being drawn up. We want to have a list of contents with uh, images because images say more than a thousand words. I go to the list of contents and it says Talis, a word. Does anyone here, apart from my colleague um, at the back of the room, does Talis ring a bell with you? When I show the fitting, the image of the fitting, then you will know immediately what a talus is. Then an optimized display of product information. It's uh, to look nice, appealing for a product data. We've already adapted the design. And of course, we also want to do this in our quotations. So the most important information packaged and then with a high-end appeal that uh, does justice to our products. Then the integration of uh, multi-page editorial PDFs. In the former times, you simply had to select individual PDFs and add them as attachment, attachments. This is not intuitive. It takes too long. When I have a PDF uh, file of several pages, then I want to upload it or attach it in one go. So now it is simply integrated into the pages. And this is what it's going to be like in future, as simple as possible. Then the next brief was the further, further individualization or personalization of the contact page. To have the telephone number, the email address, so that uh, you can actually get back to Hanskoa quickly and place your orders. Let's have a look at um, how we uh, do it now. We can't see it live, unfortunately, but we've brought along uh, some some views. Uh, uh, C4C is our CRM system by SAP. And here I can, uh, there. Uh, can list my articles correspondingly. I have a list there. This can be one article, it can be 20 articles, but it can also be 200 articles. At the end of the day, I have this overview and again, individual or personalized prices. So when I have reached agreement with a customer for certain discounts, then this is all stored in our CRM. And this information is of course to be used later on. Timo Zimmermann in the architectural chart showed the first step. 
there is the uh, measure an individual website or personal website for personalization and this is what it looks like here again the aim was uh, to make it uh, look as if you were still in the C4C system or in the CRM system. Because for the user, when you have a different view, people are getting mixed up. Where am I? You should feel at home instead. And the experience is to be just nice. Second step with images now. This is the pre-selection of the images we, we supply and they are cached. If I want to have more images, then I simply um, click the icon and in the background there is an asset picker and then I go to Salem and from Salem I can actually choose or pick further images, project images and actually introduce them into my landing page. If I want to integrate my own images, then it's also possible to do. Then uh, I can also implement further steps, uh, but uh, let us briefly look at the product details page. Uh, we're still in the middle of the project and its implementation. If I want to have one product per page, two products per page, do I have to include the dimensional drawings or maybe the awards that I have received for this article, quality features, certificates, and so on and so forth. All of this can be included. And the same applies to a pre-quote, to teaser customers without prices, then I simply state no prices. I simply want to have a beautiful overview and the images and the article information should be placed accordingly. If I actually click on this button, then the uh, background process starts. It goes right to the print suite and then uh, what I get is the document. Uh, this is a double image now for the landing page uh, with an exemplary text attached. You could actually say something about the project. You're free to, to do that. Uh, the next is the customer logo. Hans Grohe has a three-stage distribution system. This means we sell to wholesalers and the wholesalers then uh, sell to plumbers or to customers. So we do not actually sell direct. Customers will find their logos here. So uh, this helps our customer relations because customers feel on board, they feel at home here. They know they're being appreciated by Hans Grohe. This is me. In this case, I'm the salesperson or the so-called facility consultant or project consultant who draws up this quotation. Of course, I can also include notes, price information, validity dates, all of the information that are of relevance to me. What you can see well is the price overview. I can actually show the list prices, but uh, since we've linked it to the CRM, I already said that the prices, the customer prices, are actually stored in the CRM. They are actually collected in what we've done with the mashup. Then there is a combination of data sent to the print suite. And in the print suite, these customized prices end up in this document. So we always have the current state of affairs. Also possible, single room, executive suite. I can actually break it down by rooms. So I have a standard bathroom I can define, but I could also say I have an exclusive bathroom that I want to have included, or a kitchen, for instance, that I could define. Or I could also say just standard luxury. And uh, this means I can actually reflect several price segments in one and the same quotation. And this was the specifications overview where I also include the images. Again, article information, the article name, the surface finish, uh, 
in this particular case, we have the EAN number included, the price and the page number. So in the document, I would actually jump right to the exact page. This is a one page included. I did not want to include the four page version with the dimensional drawing and the explosion view. I simply wanted to show the most relevant information in one page. The awards are featured, the image is featured, the dimensional drawing, the technologies that are being used for this product. And there customers can really read the detailed information if the specifications overview is not enough for customers, then I have the detailed information uh, in the attachment readily available. The last page should also be appealing. Um, standard visual is uh, stored. We could have said in the mashup, we want to have another picture. So I can also select a personalized uh, image for the customer from Salem or include my own. Uh, this is me again, of course, because I am the offer maker, so to speak. But I can also include a second colleague who uh, is in the back office. So Timo, when somebody calls you, you know why now. And at the end of the day, the quotations and the specifications look appealing. And this is what we want to have because we sell designer products. At the same time, the specifications should be featured in the quotations and they should be just as appealing as the products themselves. What have we learned? What are lessons learned? The product project experiences we've acquired. We learned uh, that the requirements made by technical departments are often not sufficient. Uh, you often have questions left, uh, details are missing. Where does the price come from? Uh, what is the exact price you want to have? When you show a certain quantity, for instance, the total quantity plus the price, do you want the total or just the individual price displayed? Or do you need both? These are questions you have to ask. Then, um, Mrs. or Mr. So we want to become even more personal. In the first version, we had in the contact field, we only had a Simon Wacker. Now we have Mr. Simon Wacker because we have so many colleagues with uh, international backgrounds and you often don't know, is this a male or female first name? In Germany, for instance, Kai, this is both a male and a female first name. Such issues need to be addressed. Where you get the information from, where's the truth, and this needs to be defined. These are important lessons learned. Then automated layout for different products and the um, extent of information is difficult. We have products that have relatively little information. There are some bullet points, 10 bullet points with the key information, but there are also articles with 30 uh, pieces of information. So. One product with 10, the other product with 30 lines. So how do you all fit it in on, on one page? So um, this can be defined with the colleagues who are responsible for the project. So we need to consult with them, have to agree with them. And uh, there are many, many, many parties involved in this. The other thing is no low code project. Huh, who would have thought that? Despite the use of InDesign, we uh, required lots of programming. And uh, there you can really feel the scarcity of skilled labor. Uh, together with Timo, I listened to the lecture by uh, on the PDF renderer version 4.2. It is to become easier and we really look forward to that for the future because this is definitely the right direction to go to reduce complexity and uh, to open programming 
to a broader developer base, uh, people that can be onboarded, and, and so that uh, these uh, uh, personalization scenarios can really be put into practice. Because everything that becomes easier for the person that enters data will automatically become more complex in the background. And this is why it is important to also make sure that uh, development is, is ensured, that the product can survive. And uh, instead of saying, well, we can't find any developers for this, we need to introduce new products for publishing because we can't find the developers anymore. Then the interface definition between C4C and Print Suite is mission critical. That was another lesson learned. Coordination must be good, colleagues must be onboarded, and the briefing must be right. And um, and this was also included, the performance for uh, producing big PDFs. This was a 44-pager you saw before, but we also have specifications in South Africa. Uh, for over 200 articles, we used to have the landing page and the ending page. And per article, we had at least one page. So at the end, you end up with uh, a document of uh, 200 to 300 pages. Waiting times for loading are seven, six to eight minutes. Nobody accepts this. We have a timeout of the interface at times because the document is uh, actually returned to C4C so that CRM can be fed with the information and knows what we've sent the customer. And these are challenges that we're faced with. And this is why we're all the happier looking forward to the new version. And we would love to have a sneak preview to actually benefit from it in future. And if there are any questions, we have some time left until the farewell session. So feel free. I would have liked to know whether... Uh, the classical quotation generation w was done in a, in a normal CRM system beforehand. Uh, was this completely replaced now? Um, did you also have to work on that interface? Do you have a completely new interface now for drawing up uh, quotations now? No, uh, we uh, still have this quotation process in the SAP. The document that you see, that you saw initially, uh, continues to exist. The minute the colleagues uh, want to design a beautiful quotation with uh, enriched information, then they would use C4C. They either get the uh, um, quotation transferred from uh, SAP so that the basic structure and the article is already integrated, and then in the C4C. See, it can be enriched with and reorganized with um, uh, elements. As Mr. Wagner said, you can go via um, rooms, alternatives, or tapping points. And then the specification process can be done through this service. To us, it was only important uh, that the information in the document continues to be as binding as in the SAP document. And this is why um, you can do it in parallel. When drawing up PDFs, you can also use hyperlinks in PDF. And if yes, uh, uh, why have you not embedded the order function right away? That's a good point. Uh, links for uh, exist for the page numbers in the list of contents, a direct order functionality. Since we work in the B2B context and have this uh, three-stage distribution system, the quotation will not be addressed to the person that actually places the orders. There is the investor, there's a planner, there's an architect, there's so many people involved, but that's a good point. So that uh, at the end you can also say, please place the order now. Uh, concerning uh, digitalization and archiving, if the personalization is done at the end, how do you ensure that the uh, personalization is stored somewhere and that you can actually archive this and, and follow it up? Well, versioning at the end 
it is the information that we write into the PDF. This information is persistent in the system. So the document is just a visualization of the information uh, saved in the system. Yes, uh, y you could actually answer this as follows. The information is in the CRM. All information on the product is in PIM. The uh, visuals come from the Salum, so uh, we simply offer a different front end, which is then saved in the C4C. So uh, we always have it uh, cur at the current state of affairs, and the sources are not uh, changed. It's just a PDF that actually shows the information more beautifully. Well, at the end, the consultant in our CRM is uh, actually the contact that actually can save this uh, quotation. This was not automated because the consultant can create several versions until he's happy in terms of content. And this is why it is up to the consultant in communication with customers to actually uh, deliver it, uh, uh, it uh, to the contact. Yes, I would like to know whether the success of this measure is really measurable. Uh, you used to draw up uh, quotations that for some reasons were not really up to, to, to send it for uh, the sales department. Now you actually submit these beautiful quotations. Have you sold more? Uh, are the quotations received better? Do you have a feedback from sales? What we try to do is uh, uh, to enable the consultant to draw up more quotations in, in some, in total. But the feedback and, and, and the uh, conversion rate, positive orders, we have not really um, measured this. But we have one KPI and this is the number of documents uh, generated. And this is a, a measurable um, number.